Hey guys, welcome to Crypto Mining Insider. I hope everyone's having a great day today. I'm having a really great day too, except my muscles are super sore. See, I was helping my dad renovate his old place yesterday and he was putting down a lot of hardwood flooring, renovating the bathroom. And it's been a while since I did that heavy duty construction and wow, it's it can definitely be hard backbreaking work. I kind of feel like I was in a rodeo yesterday and obviously I didn't win the rodeo. It was a, still a great experience and it was a great opportunity to get out and spend some time with my dad. I was really happy to do that. But along the day, my wife reached out to me. She goes, hey, hon, you take a look at Ethereum price. And sure enough, wow, yeah, I've seen it start rallying back. And it's up to like over 1400 14 23 31 is what I've seen on Coinbase. So I was really surprised, like, wow. And I knew there was some news earlier in the week, but I kind of wanted to dig a little bit deeper into it. See, nothing comes for free. Whenever we seem to gain something from Ethereum, it seems to come at some cost. Like when we unlock our LHR cards, but yet the mining profitability goes down. Now we're getting a higher mining revenue with Ethereum mining. However, Ethereum is now now looking with more firm dates to go. It's proof of stake, which is an absolute huge game changer for a lot of us. I'm going to be taking a look at this as well as some other important stories in this video. If you haven't already subscribed, don't forget to press down on that subscribe button. Stick with me and let's get started. Let's take a look at Ethereum over the past week. So I have a one week horizon selected in Coinbase and I see Ethereum is now up 15, 16, almost 17% at the time. Keeps fluctuating. Wow, that's a very, very healthy gain. The ironic part though too is, is if I look at Bitcoin, it doesn't seem to share that same upward mobility at the time, which is really interesting in my opinion. If I look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin is actually down at this time. So, wow, they're kind of working in negatively correlated in this sense. In the past, it's very different because whenever you'd see Bitcoin rise, Ethereum would be following. And then you'd see Bitcoin go down, Ethereum would follow. But now they seem to have the uh, forking, in lack of better words, from the correlation. I'm seeing for one of the first times in quite a while, Bitcoin is on the down. But yet Ethereum is making a huge step up for this. And I think a large part of this is due to the news that Ethereum has been very, very uh, proactive now or verbal about articulating some of the dates for proof of stake. And that's probably the, one of the biggest stories we've seen in quite a while with it, the mining. Now, Ethereum, the dev team has actually announced like Tim Bako, they were throwing some dates out there like September 19th of 2022 which is actually just a little bit over two months away that they may be going to proof of stake, which will make the coin unminable for us. And that'll have huge impact for us as miners. And however, there's a lot of people I know who are invest or hodl in the coins. They're looking forward to returning to proof of stake. And that seems to be one of the big reasons it's causing this big price spike on Ethereum. But yet, if you watch, Bitcoin is kind of working the opposite way. It's in the red. Jumping over to what's mine to get an idea of profitability, let me plug in a single 3080 card and I already have 12 cents a kilowatt hour, which is my average cost of electricity. Ethereum right now will give me a $1.33 profit daily after electricity costs. So that's great and I'd be happy to keep that for a while. Although it's no far off call from where it was a year ago when prices were great, these are still very respectable numbers. Ethereum Classic is also going to be giving me about 82 cents a day because with this recent search of Ethereum, Ethereum Classic's also been going on the up. I've been noticing too. Ergo is about 55 cents a day after electricity costs. Ravencoin is 74 cents. And even Conflux, which is Octopus, is 86 cents a day, which these are all great numbers. However, once we lose the Ethereum mining, once the Ethereum proof of stake hits place and you have all this hash rate coming from GPU miners scattering amongst the different algorithms as well as the ASICs probably targeting Ethereum Classic, it's going to be really hard, extremely challenging to be profitable mining. And I think we may be hitting into a crypto winter for a little while while that going is on. I don't really know. And this is not financial advice. Just kind of be prepared for it too. And hopefully we'll be able to mine Ethereum longer than they're saying with the September 19th date. Some of the other coin projects, which seem more optimistic in what value that they're offering, as well as the ability to mine, I'm not seeing the market value, market cap really equivalent to, to them. So if I'm looking down for Zell Hash, which is Flux, okay, I'm seeing this card would give me $1.15 would be what it would be making gross a day before electricity costs. 
But after electricity costs, it's only going to be making 43 cents a day. So that's in the current market conditions. And again, on what to mine. So that still has a pretty high consumption on electricity before it would become really a viable source for me. Rather than wading through a lot of different articles, videos, and vlogs on the internet, I thought it would be useful to take a look at the actual dev call from the Ethereum Foundation. So searching YouTube, I found the Ethereum Foundation and I see call number 91. And this call, I actually going to jump in and show you the excerpt where they discuss the September 19th date. So let's go take a look. Can you contextualize that in terms of a mainnet timeline? <laughs> It, I guess, you know, imagine we fork Gordy on the 11th of August, um, everything goes well, everyone's super happy. It probably won't happen, like, you know, imagine like, yeah, we, 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 we see it go well, we want to see it like stable for obviously a couple of days to a week. It means on the 18th of August for all core devs, we can probably decide upon like, when do we fork mainnet? And, you know, imagine that like, we have the release out, releases out the week after that, or like, yeah, so that means that then two weeks after that, that's like early September, early September, and then like mid late September, we would hit TTD. So I think it it's as well like yeah. If we have the possible. release, if we have the releases out early September, then I don't think we can fork mid to late. September. No, sorry, I meant early September. You get data tricks. So it's like we oh, okay. we fork yeah. on the eleventh, on the eighteenth, we decide we decide on like the final values. So the releases are out like, you know, like the week of the 24th or, so, or the week of the 22nd of August. And then two weeks after that, you have Bellatrix. And then two weeks after that, you have TTD, um, which gives you like the week of September 19th. And if we wanted to be like slightly more aggressive, you know, like, I guess the thing that would maybe buy us another week in a way is like, either we don't fork Gordy on the 11th, we have like a lower gap between Bellatrix and TTD. Or if we want to get a couple of days as well, we can also have like an off schedule call because we're like waiting basically a week between Gordy Fork and the next Alcor devs to choose the TTD. If we want to save a couple more days, we could have like an off schedule call or just move Alcor devs the next week to like the Tuesday, for example. And then um, and then you gain that much, that, that many more days, so. This video and the ramifications of these decisions were really startling to me. Actually, they were pretty scary. In the past, I've watched in and peeked in on some of the Ethereum dev calls, and they look like some of the most unorganized meetings I've ever seen before. But now to actually see dates being, you know, kind of drawn in the sand, trying to say, hey, we're going to be targeting maybe the week of September 19th, possibly even sooner, although that has yet to be seen. But they seem to be a lot more aggressive with trying to stamp out dates there. Now, are they doing this as just kind of maybe some clickbait to kind of just make things rise? I know they took out some of the features they were originally planning with the Ethereum merge to accomplish this, but... I guess, you know, we'll find out in a very short time because that September 19th date is only two months away. And honestly, too, it has me as a miner pretty alarmed and pretty concerned. What am I going to be mining next? Although I've been trying to build my rigs to try to find efficiency for a lot of my GPUs, I think it's going to be a real challenge for us as miners. We're going to have to hopefully find some new projects to get behind. Some of the projects I've already looked at include some of mining like Ergo and even Flux. For many of us, this sudden September 19th date comes as a really big surprise. I know I'm still mining Ethereum and I, I wanna mine every nickel I can out of it. I know a lot of you do too. However, I understand too that there's hodlers and investors out there that can't wait for Ethereum to go proof of stake and realize hopefully a big price increase. What that will mean for us as miners, I guess only time will tell. I'm just going to be hoping we find a new great project that can hopefully rally, get a lot of great market pricing behind it soon, and be able to handle the hash rate transition. However, too, let's not ignore the Bitcoin side of it, because I actually found a story there that was pretty buried, but I thought it was pretty interesting. So although Ethereum has gone up 14.5%, 15% this week approximately, Jumping over to Bitcoin, I still see it pretty flatlined at almost nothing, less than 1% of an increase. And I came across this story, ironically, of someone who I sometimes follow for their videos. Came across this very, very interesting video. Uh, it's posted by Andre Jik, J-I-K-H. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. He offers a lot of interesting perspective on economic issues 
often and often touches on crypto. He actually had a very interesting story about Bitcoin and how there may be a new flood or liquidation of Bitcoins coming onto the market and how that could affect the market possibly. I don't know the long-term effects of it, but I thought it was a really interesting story. I'm going to play a tiny excerpt of his video and you can go watch it for the full details. I really encourage you to. It's very interesting. I'd love to know your thoughts about it, especially if you're an OG miner. You probably heard a lot of things like about the Mt. Gox, Mather, Magic of the Gathering, and the legal litigation that ensued from it. Back to it. All right, so this is a crazy story. Roughly 137,890 Bitcoins worth about $3 billion are about to potentially flood the market and have a huge impact on Bitcoin's prices. Wow, could you imagine if 137,890 Bitcoins were suddenly just dropped on the market? The significant impact that would have to Bitcoin prices, it's really unimaginable. And it would be pretty unprecedented as well. I definitely encourage you, if you wanna learn more though, definitely watch the story. I'm gonna be putting a link down below. It's just something that I just thought uh, was very interesting and I wanted you to be aware of too, especially if you're probably one of the mining OGs, you've probably are familiar with some of these stories like this with Mt. Gox or Magic of the Gathering. So if you have, I'd love to know your thoughts of it. Do you think this is gonna happen? Do you think all of a sudden this surge of, um, about $3 billion worth of Bitcoin is gonna be dropped onto the market. And what are your long-term outlooks? If you're a hodler or if you're a miner, I'd love to know your thoughts of this. Were you as shocked as I was to learn about the Ethereum going proof of stake as early as September, maybe even September 19th or sooner? I'd love to know. So definitely drop a comment down below. So that about wraps it up for the new stories for today. For me, I am still solo mining as well doing some pool mining because now pool mining has become more profitable. So it's kind of more intriguing for me to get that more consistent and stable dollar. I've been uh, pool mining, solo mining on Ethereum this month and I already have two blocks found. So that's already like four Ethereum. So that's already a great month for me. But I'm going for that third block right now and I'm already up to 57%. So I'm not as lucky this time as I was earlier on, but hopefully I'm crossing my fingers. I'll get it pretty soon. And hopefully I'll get a bunch more blocks before Ethereum ever goes proof of stake. I really don't want it to go proof of stake. I'm looking forward to mining it at least till something else develops more market cap and the ability to mine it. Um, but it seems inevitable. It's going to turn proof of stake. So, you know, shit happens, I guess you could say. Bleep that out. I guess, you know, stuff happens. Uh, looking at my Ethereum Classic, I'm really happy here because I've already gotten nine blocks. And I'm doing this primarily on my one Founders Edition 3070 rig. And sometimes I'll push some hash over there. Not much. Let me show you. I have uh, also another AMD rig. It has about another 160 mega hash. So altogether, I'm about 635 mega hash. But I've already mined nine blocks this past 30 days. And each block now is a little over two and a half uh, Ethereum Classic. So each block is like 50 bucks. So it's $450 in less than a month for this. So wow, that's really good. And my overall luck, if I look at the rewards, actually, I just got a block a few hours ago this afternoon. So the last one I got it was at 43%, which is still really respectable. It's almost like two and a half times as fast as statistically likely. But my overall luck is about 36%. So that's really good. It's almost three times faster than statistically likely. However, what I get concerned about is, is now what if things like Ethereum... This guy here ends up going proof of stake. A lot of that hash rate is going to go over to the Ethereum Classic. And I don't think the mining rewards and profitability is going to be nearly what it is even right now. Although Ethereum is more profitable as a whole, but the Ethereum Classic, it's not going to be able to support that hash rate, I believe, especially if you're going to get a lot of the Ethereum ASICs going over there. It's going to be very, very hard to kind of compete with them and be profitable. So that's why we're going to have to rely on finding some of these other coins, maybe Ergo, maybe Flux. They seem to have pretty decent efficiencies too, at least more efficient than mining Ethereum. They, but they're gonna have to develop more market cap, I think, for us to be able to mine them at like anywhere near the profitability we've become accustomed to with Ethereum. That's it. I mean, I, w I wish I could kind of just, you know, roll, uh, roll back time and we could get a few more years out of mining Ethereum. I know some of you have probably been hodling it. You can't wait for it to go to proof of stake and maybe see some huge leap in the coins. I guess it all depends if you're a hodler and you're waiting for it to rise or if you're still trying to mine it and squeeze every little bit out of it. Ethereum mining has kind of been like 
a bittersweet relationship, I think. It's where we're, it's sweet to get the rewards, but it's very, very bitter all the stuff to go through because the Ethereum and the Ethereum dev teams, they don't want anything really to do with us miners. They want to kick us to the curb. Look, we have to kind of like beg for them to almost just release and give us, unlock the difficulty bomb just to give us a little bit more time. Why did they didn't do it out of any kindness to us? They did it because they needed us so they could finish doing what they're doing for proof of stake. But at the same time too, you know, I really don't want to be mining on a project that doesn't want me there in the first place or doesn't want me supporting or having any voice in it. So it's kind of be, it'd be good to kind of be able to kick the curb with them. However, too, at the same time too, I really like the mining reward from the Ethereum. So that's what kind of makes it bittersweet. It's like, I like the mining reward, but I don't really like the way the Ethereum or the Ethereum project has gone on, especially in the way they've treated the miners. But I sure I'm not alone with this. If you have some thoughts and sentiment too, I'd love to share it, vent it, your voice. A lot of people are going to read it. So definitely drop a comment down below. Anyway, that about wraps it up for me today. So I plan to just keep doing my best I can do, keep mining and finding new ways to be creative and make more money with mining. And hopefully we can weather this storm together and I think it's going to be some challenging market ahead. And stay tuned. If you haven't already subscribed, don't forget to press down on subscribe so you're notified of any updates on this. Till next time, stay safe. See you on the next video. Happy mining.